Michael Beale need that result. Sunderland have just beaten Stoke City 3-1 at the Stadium of Light in the Championship. I've just got home from the game. That was a massive, massive, massive lifeline and a step forward in the head coaching career of Michael Beale at Sunderland. The atmosphere at the Stadium of Light that I thought was very, very subdued at kickoff. Um, obviously, Sunderland fans got behind their team. There was no chance of, of bail out or anything like that. Sunderland fans sort of uh, kept the powder dry and just kept supporting the team. Um, there were concerns that it was going to be a toxic atmosphere at the Stadium of Light, given the comments Michael Beale had made during the week. But Sunderland won. I thought it was telling that though Sunderland did win, that there was no, you know, there was no chance for Michael Beale by the Roker end or by the Stadium of Light crowd in general at the end of the game. Um, so I think Michael Beale still does have some way to go during his Sunderland career to you know get fans back on side after the past couple of weeks and his eight-game tenure as Sunderland's head coach. But I think this was an important first step on the road to recovery. Now, it might be that regardless of what Michael Beale does in his Sunderland career, in terms of the short term picking up wins, this you know this past week might never be forgotten. It might take him you know getting Sunderland promoted to the Premier League even for all to be forgiven. But for now, he has had a stay of execution. Sunderland have beaten Stoke City at the Stadium of Light. All eyes now turn to Middlesbrough. We at his rivalry renewed at the Riverside Stadium next Sunday. But if Michael Beale loses that and Sunderland aren't convincing, then it's back to square one. But let's concentrate on the positives today um, I thought Sunderland fans were brilliant their evasion for the returning Lyndon Gooch I thought was absolutely fantastic it was a brilliant serv uh, servant for us and it was great to hear the chance of Gooch it was great to see how emotional he got fantastic by Sunderland fans really showed their class I'd like to say congratulations to Luke O'Nine making his 250th appearance in all competitions for Sunderland there are only two people since the turn of the millennium to make the same number of appearances or more uh, than Lugo 9, that is John O'Shea and Lee Catamol. So he is in good, good company with that statistic, a great servant to Sunderland. I actually thought today he had a fantastic game. I think Lugo 9 gets a lot of um, he gets a lot of stick. He gets a lot of criticism when things don't go too well. Um, yes, he's not a natural centre back. Yes, he can sometimes make some rash decisions at centre back. But I thought today was magnificent. He advanced the ball really well. He carried the ball out of defence really well. But I have to also mention his defensive colleague, Dan Ballard, who I thought was brilliant. Somebody rightly pointed out to me on Twitter that a lot has said about Jack Clark and what would happen if you took Jack Clark out of the Sunderland team. Well, what would happen if you took Dan Ballard out of the Sunderland team? You know, that defence really, really relies on him. Jensen Silk coming in at right back again. Um, you can see that he's not a right back. He's definitely a centre back and he doesn't have too much joy going forward. But I think he has been solid so far. Trey Hume, a player that I love, he's filling in at left-back. I think he is better on the right, and we do blunt his sort of attack and nouse. But he is good foil for Clark on that left-hand side. And let's talk about Jack Clark again. He was just so direct with his running. He calls problems for Stoke City the whole game. And on the opposite flank, Abdullah two assists and a goal for him. I'm really, really pleased. He's had a tricky time at Sunderland. Uh, you know, in and out the team, in and out the side. Um, he's obviously been here a long time now, but he's still young, still learning about the English game. And he's copped some some pretty intense flack from fans at times. Great for him to bounce back. And I think the really pleasing thing about Abdullah Bar, um, regardless of whether things are going well or not for him, he always, always puts in a shift. And I think that's that's really valuable to Sunderland and something Sunderland fans will, will really respect. Mason Burstow, opening the scoring for Sunderland. You know, I was surprised to see Mason Burstow start for Sunderland. I was expecting to see Rusin. Um, and I didn't really understand on the surface Michael Beale's decision to drop Rusin again. But fair play, Burstow's come in and he's scored. Hopefully that's the first of many. He comes from great pedigree uh, at Chelsea. Beale was quick to point out in his post-match press, uh, press conference after Stoke City that... You know, Burstow is always staying behind in training. Uh, he's always looking to improve and he's been really impressed with him generally. So hopefully 
he can catch light, um, catch a light and, and start scoring scoring goals um, for Sunderland. I think the timing of two, Sunderland's opening two goals today, either side of half time, really killed Stoke um, and their momentum. Stephen Schumacher, their manager, was furious after the game because they were wasteful, and I think they were wasteful. Let's not paint this as a really dominant Sunderland win because it, it was in terms of scoreline, Sunderland finished their chances better, but Stoke did have some really clear-cut chances, arguably could have been ahead. I thought they edged the first half up until Sunderland scored, um, just about. Uh, but... Credit to Anthony Patterson. He, he he pulled out a couple of good saves. That's what he's in the team to do. Um, he, and you know you could go through Sunderland's team today. Very pleasing performances from Job, from Neil, um, from Equar as well. Getting a goal, Patterson in in um, in between the sticks. I thought was fantastic. Abdullah on the right, Clark on the left, Bursto, um, Luke O'Neill. I mentioned previously as well. Uh, so yeah, a good day all round for Sunderland. Unexpected, I think. That I don't think many people were expecting Sunderland fans, uh, expecting Sunderland to win that game. Um, but we also must talk about the big drama before the game. Now we published a report on the Sunderland Echo yesterday, which stated that despite the contract offer, Alex Pritchard was not happy with the way it had been handled. Um, obviously, that report came to bear today before the game. Alex Pritchard. Uh, is not prepared to play for Sunderland at the moment. He's sort of withdrawn his labour um, while his transfer and contract saga is progressing. He is clearly not happy with his treatment um, by the club and the handling of the contract offer. He clearly has offers on the table to go elsewhere on a longer deal. And you do have to respect the player in a sense. He has to look after his, his long-term future. He has to look out for himself. He has to look out for number one. Um, but unfortunately, from my point of view, from fans' point of view, I think if you're under contract at a club, um, you, you shouldn't refuse to play. You know, fair play if, if his head's gone and he feels he needs to do that. I, I do understand that there is an argument from his side. But from a, a fan's perspective, I think it's poor form. Not taking anything away from Alex Pritchard. I think he's been a marvellous servant to Sunderland, a player I've really, really enjoyed watching. Um, but there's clearly, there's clearly bad on both sides here. The club have clearly handled this poorly. Um, and Alex Pritchard feels put out by that, and he is, you know, he's now essentially not prepared to play for Sunderland anymore until he moves um, and finds a new club and starts to play for them. But please let me know in the comments section what you thought about this game against Stoke City. Sunderland did ride the luck in periods. Was it as convincing as the scoreline suggests? How many games does Michael Beale have to win at Sunderland for you to be convinced? I still saw Beale out um, comments on social media after the game. Are you in that camp? Are you not in that camp? Does, does he deserve time? Is he winning you around? Is he convincing you? Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on the Alex Pritchard situation as well. Do you empathise with him? Do you sympathise with him? Or... Are you backing the club on this one? Or are you somewhere in the middle? Please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and thank you once again for watching. Oh, yeah.